Um, thank, thanks, uh, thanks for having me here and apologies. Um, for, I'll, I'll have to rush off at about half 10 to um, a care home working group, a care home meeting um, with Department of Health. So, so apologies, this is a kind of a flying visit. Um, uh, but really this is just to look at some of the work we've been doing, looking at how we can monitor um, outbreaks in, in enclosed societies. So we've um, sort of probably six months ago or so, if you'd asked me uh, why we're doing modeling and I, I still 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 keep this view, it's, it's to, to look at emergency response and do real time modeling, but also enable us to do, do preparedness. Clearly now we're in a response setting and um, we're trying to, to work out how to, to visualize data and, and provide the sort of situational awareness that policymakers need. Um, again, prior to um, uh, uh, COVID, um, I'd probably be, be heavily, <laughs> I, I, I was working on projects to look at model chains and uncertainty quantification um, with, with partners in DSTL and, and other organizations um, that, that um we, we we haven't been able to, to it has been sort of part of the advice chain separately i'm not going to go into details of that and um but 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 yeah colleagues in dstl are are, are sort of working on how to, to to provide model combination and 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 such like um of of model outputs provided to 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 spy um but we we had um the the, the challenge here of of working out what was going on in enclosed societies and so 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 a care home is is fairly detached from society from the community at large um, it's only really connected through through visitors and through um, the staff and then through hospital uh, connections um, but we really don't know what the connect, contact structures within a care home are. We can guess, we, we understand that these are very vulnerable populations. We understand that um, sort of say dementia, people suffering from dementia will have specific care needs, perhaps needing more physical contact than, than other residents. Um, but we don't really even know how, how staff interact within the settings. I mean, they, they obviously go back and mix with their families, but, but do they have breaks together um, and, and interact? So, um, we, we do understand where the 15,000 care homes are, they're, they're linked to postcodes <clears throat> and uh, addresses, so, so we have some information on where people are and we know how big the care homes are. Um, uh, and so, so we can start to sort of look at some of these aspects, but actually, as, as I'll, I'll come back to this in the summary, we, we don't fully know how the connection between the care homes and the health hospitals are. We know people leave care homes and we know people leave hospital, but we, <laughs> that the connection um, of, of where pre precisely individuals go is, is a bit uh, uncertain. So, so there are many data gaps is, is, is the essence here. And how did we get into this or how did we stumble into this this problem? How did I stumble into this problem? Well, some years ago, we did a, a, a small piece of work for flu, looking at um, outbreaks in enclosed societies. And that turned up a, a, a range of different outbreak reports in the literature. And OK, there may be reporting bias there because um, not every outbreak will be reported or, or documented, but we have uh, we were able to show that those outbreaks that were documented had higher attack rates than um, uh, oh, sorry uh, the smaller the outbreak the the the, the 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 enclosed society the higher the attack rate, um, and that's that's obviously logical in the sense that there's there's sort of if you if you only got four or five people in a in a society um, and there's an introduction then then your attack rate will be naturally higher there'll be sort of stochastic variability in that as opposed to when you've got a thousand so it's not a very profound result but it does provide um, something for policymakers to plan around and the, the 
the thing that we were able to tease out through some sort of simple regression analysis, uh, mixed effects modeling, was that the, um, we had the, uh, there was a difference in your role. So children and military personnel had a different, when you merge all the different outbreaks together, um, had slightly higher attack rates than the residents and prisoners um, and staff in the prisons. So, so there's, there's, there's a sort of potential difference um, uh, in, in your role in the society um, around what the, the attack rate might be. Um, I'm not looking to extrapolate too far from, from this flu situation to, to COVID, <coughs> but it, it, it is a, um, some, something to build from. And what other <coughs> evidence do we have um, for, from, from earlier work in the pandemic? So, so specifically for COVID, well, there were a lot of natural experiments conducted um, on cruise ships um, by, um, by, by operators and, and national, obviously the famous one or the well-documented one is the um, Diamond Princess um, that was moored off of Japan, but there were a, a spate of other um, care homes, uh, sorry, care homes, cruise ships um, that, that had had outbreaks and without, uh, without um, uh, some sort of intervention could have had very significant um, um, outbreaks. Um, so, so, so yeah, we, we saw there the potential role of uh, transmission <clears throat> uh, in these settings. And Lorenzo, um, who, who spoke earlier in the week, um, did some work looking at cocooning. <clears throat> so if you have a, um, a, a sort of background rate um, that, uh, of infection, looking at, looking at importations. So, so um, and, and the role that, that the different care home um, sizes might have, have on that. So I'm not gonna go into detail on that work, um, but, but yeah, we, we have um, uh, sort of looked at some of these, 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 these aspects around um, other settings than just care homes and um, looking at some of the, the ways that we might um, uh, cocoon. So, so we have um, a number of uh, our initial data set um, that we were provided with was simply the number of new outbreaks per day. So no information about how many cases there were in the, or no, no meaningful information about how many cases there were within a, out, within a care home, within one of these outbreaks. It was simply of those 15,000 odd care homes, how many, out, how many ha were reporting an outbreak. And so we could, we, 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 we thought, well, let's fit an SIS model or try some SIS models um, to these. Uh, so the care home is, is the sort of agent, if you like, um, and they, they become uh, contaminated through, through um, cases coming in, and then they clear those cases and become susceptible again to further importation. Uh, the, the the data kind of grew exponentially so 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 relatively simple forces of infection didn't fit the data well and when we we um when you you allow for uh force of infection proportionate to to the number of infected care homes um that didn't fit new outbreaks being reported well um it was too constraining so we ended up fitting a time varying force of infection um until some sort of saturation was was achieved. Um, uh, from that, uh, we were able to then calculate, thanks to this being an SIS model, what the the, the sort of fraction of um, the the eventual proportion of infected care homes at any given time might be um, from information uh, from the new new outbreaks reported and some estimate of the the duration. Now we have um, we've written this up uh so 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 it's on med archive um so 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 yeah you're sort of welcome to have a look at the the underlying sort of technical details of that <clears throat> at, at, at your leisure but this is uh the 
um, key, this is one of the key outputs. So this, <coughs> we can fit a gam to the, to the, to the data, basically to the time varying, um, the time varying um, SIS function is similar to, to fitting a generalized additive model. We can allow for weekend effects that, as you can see, the number of new reported outbreaks dips at weekends because there's less people to report them. And then there's a bit of a um, upswing uh, during the week. Um, as I said, this was leveling off. This was looking like it was leveling off at about 170, 180 new reports a day. Um, upper limit, perhaps, of 190. Um, if you allow for that and uh, the fact there's 15,000 care homes and make some sort of assessment of a generation time of COVID of five days and uh, four or five generations of disease within the care homes and a 14 day period after the last case before you, you report your clear, then you're up to about 30 days, um, over 30 days um, for the time to recovery putting those numbers together in a very simplistic way, as we've outlined, gives you about 40% of care homes will be um, in outbreak status um, eventually. Now that is, uh, that, that, that's relatively broad brush and it assumes that this is some natural steady state, uh, <coughs> which, which it may not be, and I'll come back to that um in 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 a in a moment uh but let's just look at the um un understand a little bit more about the, the the population at risk um for those of you that don't know the care home sector this shows the age profile of people that are in cqc registered settings so um there are some younger people but it is mostly um elderly people and um, due, due to, to, to the difference in, in um, mortality rates, um, mostly female, which means that when you look at some of the mortality data <clears throat> where we see in a bias towards men, that, that it, it changes as you, uh, with, as, you, as you get older and that's, that's when, once you adjust for the um, population um, sizes that, that that sort of disappears and it's actually fairly stable the, um, the the risk ratio between between men and women as in men are more um, uh, exposed and become cases um, but if we look at the um, number of care homes at present infected and at present we're operating at about 35% um, um, of have have had at least an out at least one case to date there is quite a difference in si between size, and so um, we we are seeing large care homes, large nursing homes, operating with about eighty percent having had at least one case. Um, large residential homes down at sort of sixty percent, uh, and and but but nursing homes are worse off um, in terms of number of reports than than residential care homes, um, probably because there's um, uh, there, there's more connectedness. Um, that may be because there's more connectedness to the hospital system, but also it may just be a nature of, um, of the staffing levels um, and the vulnerabilities of, of, of the people within the settings. And that's still under investigation. <clears throat> Looking at the um, second generation, so, so the, the lab data, so the PCR positive and negative data that's come coming out of this sector now um, clearly there is a testing program going on in in care homes and um, the, the 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 leftmost panel here shows the um, number of positive swabs nationally um, over time uh, that just shows that there's been sort of a, a rapid increase and then there's a sort of decrease in the more recent times. Probably there's a reporting lag there, so I wouldn't get too hung up on the more recent dips in numbers. Um, but 
but potentially is showing that there is a there's a slight decrease after a peak in mid May. That's in mid April. Uh, but we can tease out the difference between the positive and negative cases, and we see there the the red the middle panel are the positive swabs for one specific care home, and the 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 rightmost panel are the negative swabs. And so so here we're seeing the change in testing capacity. So suddenly um, at the start of um, end of April, start of May, um, sort of day 90-ish here, we suddenly see that the testing became available and they managed to do a blanket screen in this, in this care home. Um, so there may be issues with access to testing earlier on, um, but you see that there are these gaps. And so on day 60, that they had a case or day just before day 60 they had a case and then they um, there wasn't another case until somewhere in the mid 70s so longer than 10 days um, if we're assuming the generation time is five days um, then that is probably some sign that there's one of three well there's one of three explanations for that uh, one is that it's a there's a missed cross transmission event um, in the swabbing data uh, that which 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 might they so they may not have had testing capacity in that period another is that there was a false negative and that's not really there's no real negative tests in that period so it's probably not a false negative in this case um or that um the that this was one outbreak and this is a separate outbreak um caused by this case being a, another uh, importation so so that we, we really need to understand with for the dynamics of these diseases whether it's a, a, what's the contribution of those three um, three things and and the missed link may not be that they didn't have access to to PCR testing it may also be that they had asymptomatic infections um, in staff or or residents so so yeah there's a there's a number of also reasons for that um, but looking at this SGSS data a little further we can see if you look at that gap it's quite stable um, across um, care homes as you increase the number of swabs within the care home uh, that the, the gap there is normally at least a gap of 10 days um, on average um, in those care homes um, suggesting that there is something kind of uh, something noteworthy there in 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 that um, and then if you look at the length between the first and the last positive test um, you obviously for smaller care homes um, that 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 sort of uh, increases out but it tends to stabilize um, at something like 28 days um, and we need to think about what 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 that means epidemiologically um, but if you're thinking about clearing the, the disease and what's a sent that, that you've got that that you're still up at sort of two months or so um sort of extreme out, outbreaks so so the duration could be quite substantive um if you think back to the estimates we made for that 40 percent um prevalence was based on about 30 day duration so 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 yeah we may these could be with the care home for quite a while um on the current evidence and then there's the spatial question so, so where are these care homes and what what, are, what is that saying so this is looking at the number of positive swabs um, at postcode level in the UK apologies it's not the nicest graphic um, not the clearest graphic but what it shows is there has been um, a large-ish number of of positive swabs in and around sort of the Newcastle area, in and around the Liverpool, South Manchester area, um, and and in and around London, um, with with some other other areas um, glowing glowing red as well. So um, th there's a spatial distribution to this, and if we move on to to the total number of deaths, so so this is using lab data. Um, at postcode level, we don't have that death data at postcode level yet. We're we're working on that. So we we have upper tier local authorities um, reports of 
deaths reported to CQC. Um, here you see a slightly different pattern. So, so, so you're seeing um, areas such as Hampshire and Devon and Dor Dorset, um, well, Hampshire certainly glowing red, um, and then moving across into Surrey. Um, and it's sort of these these sort of leafy residential uh, uh, sort of commuter belt. Um, although obviously these these are people dying in care homes, so they're not really commuting. Um, and and up here um, in the in the northwest. Now that's total deaths. That doesn't account for how many uh, care homes there are or or how many where where. So so actually Hampshire has a lot of, has had a lot of deaths. It obviously has a major problem. But actually, there's a lot of people retire in Hampshire. A lot of people do retire to to care homes in 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 Hampshire. So when we adjust for that, if we look at the number of deaths per care home, uh, that shows a slightly different picture. And so we see again this this band more in keeping with the the pattern that we saw of swab positivity of um, of of this band across Liverpool and South Manchester. Um, perhaps some sort of of the urban centre in the northeast, and and uh, into this sort of Oxfordshire. Um, Reading seems to have sort of become come bad as well. So so there's there's definitely a, a spatial um, co component here and, and a spatial distribution that 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 we're sort of currently trying to make sense of and understand. Uh, and as we look at the the monitoring uh, indicators. More generally, we, we have these um, all cause deaths uh, reported to CQC. Again, this is by date of well, this is by date of notification rather than date of death. So there's a weekend effect. Uh, but there was a peak mid August, uh, mid April, um, and there seems to be a downward trajectory. And so, so this is fitting that that gam smoother um, to to that, and we can look at the instantaneous growth rate. Um, so, so the derivative of the spline effectively to give us some indication of whether, so if this was exponentially growing, this would be um, flat. Um, uh, and, and so we do seem to be in some sort of perhaps exponential decay regime or, or, or similar. Uh, so, so, so deaths are going down in care homes, which is a good sign. Coming back to the number of outbreaks reported, if you remember the earlier graph, I truncated the time series about here, um, where it looked like we were plateauing, but that's because we sort of advised action um, in early earlier in April, and so so the the the, the chain changes have been made, um, and so so the number of new outbreaks has diminished, um, and and gone down. Uh, yeah, has has gone down. So that's 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 a good. Um, impact there from 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 the modelling assessment. Um, so in summary, we have um, the trend prior to, to sort of awareness of the problem in the care home sector seemed to be leading to a substantive burden of disease in that sector. Um, we and and that has been um, modified um, uh, affected now uh, in a in a positive way. We have good data. Um, on monitoring trends for mortality and outbreaks, and we're hopeful of finer scale data at care home level, so we can actually match the swabbing to the mortality data to, to, to come up with some sort of internal verification of the data sets. Um, there, there are two key issues that I can't stress enough. One is that we seem to be missing information about staff um, in terms of the swab positivity. And that will obviously be made that if we're ever going to do modeling within care homes, not only do we need to know contact rates, we need to know where whether the staff are being infected and are are, are acting as vectors of disease. Um, and then the other issue is is trying to understand the connectivity between hospitals and community. Um, so hospitals and care homes that should read because obviously people get discharged from hospital to care homes often and people get sick in care homes and need to go to hospital. So there's there's a connection connectivity there. Um, and it, yeah, we'll be working on the testing strategy moving forwards and understanding this sort of role of staff absence and looking at other settings of other enclosed societies than um, care homes. And I think uh, that, yeah, that brings me to, oh, sorry, just to say this is part of, uh, I, I co-chair with um, Charlotte Watts, the, the care home working group for SAGE. 
and so so yeah there's there's uh, alicia rosello in london school has um is working on a more detailed model trying to understand these contact patterns um and that's that's me over good morning thank you um we heard a very interesting talk was it yesterday about phylogenetic stuff and so the question is whether i mean simple uh, cases of one thing but if you're really interested in whether the case was introduced or whether someone caught it an interesting thing to do would be to do some some really uh, some dna stuff so that's the suggestion back for you and charlotte um yeah thank and, you where you know whether it was well we know you know whether it was someone catching it outside bringing it in or whether it was um uh, internally communicated and that's not that that's that's very important from a policy point of view actually isn't it because um uh, you know um well yes obviously and also from not exactly pointing the finger but to say what they should be particularly careful about and helping to explain what actually went on yeah no i think thank you for that i think i think i am i Kind of deliberately didn't talk about the whole genome sequencing work that 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 is part of this and uh, PHE have have done a deep dive into six care homes in in London over over the Easter weekend and and looked at some of the um uh, the 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 out uh, yeah I mean they they can you can show from that 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 the staff have a role in 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 the transmission cycle um uh and that's not blaming the staff they're they're, they're, they're um, not a very well resourced um community uh, uh, sector so so it, it's really about how we can support the staff and clearly if if you're on a zero hours contract then 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 you may feel pressure to work when you might otherwise be better well off and also um the issue which happened earlier on of staff who work in in several places yeah. which was, i mean that's obvious but um yeah, no, no, it's not about blaming anybody. It's about understanding. And also, actually, of course, the staff are a danger to each other. Yeah. Not just, you know, the other thing which is more difficult to track for you is is when, you know, nothing to do with the with, with the with the residents. It's to do with when the staff, uh, you know, it's like it's like they say the risk of going back to school is that teachers will spread it among themselves. And so it's the same thing that, yeah. you know, you can take enormous care with the uh, with the patients and then you have a cup of coffee with each other etc so which is human which is natural you know so yeah exactly yeah yeah no thank, thanks okay any other questions uh i think i can see hannah clapham has a hand. hi thank you yeah hi hannah. Uh, that was a really nice presentation thank you i was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the conclusion that the measures that have been put in place are working I was wondering um, how you're determining that given the testing that's been changing and um, how the models are feeding into that process. Yeah, no, I, I was probably a bit over simplistic in, uh, in, 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 in that statement in that what, what we're seeing, I mean, it's difficult to prove cause and effect here. So, so we are seeing a sort of downward trajectory um, that, that is due to, to some sort of intervention. Um, there are, Testing is 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 ramping up, um, but I think they are certainly. What, what I what I didn't have time to go into. There's there's a, there's a whole world of detail to this, but the, the the spatial pattern that I sort of touched on. You you can see the northwest had a substantive outbreak. So some of that peak is due purely to the number of cases in the northwest. Um, some of the other regions are more stable in their reporting and so speaking to the director of public health in the northwest in in liverpool um they they've put they've put in place local action plans and so there is a heterogeneous um uh response um uh that, that, that is somewhat coordinated but 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 there, there are definitely local interventions around maybe encouraging staff not to, to live at home in, in hotels and, and, and things thinking outside the box slightly to, 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 to make the um, uh, interventions more efficacious. So not a good answer to the question, but it's, it's complex, <laughs> which doesn't really <laughs> help anyone. But yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Um, if there are not more questions, we should thank Ian very much and let him get away. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Ian, for an excellent presentation. Thanks.